All right, so we want to prove, so we have some oddly defined set and we want to prove, or we want to show what its boundary is. So let's fancy you be the collection of all UI where UI is the interval from AI to BI. So let's see here. So we want to prove that the boundary of A is equal to the set. So what we need to do is we need to prove inclusion in both directions. So first, let X be in the interval from 0 to 1, but not in A. What we need to prove is we need to prove that X is in the boundary of A. So, let's see here. Yeah, so we want to prove that X is in the boundary of A. So we want to prove that every neighborhood of X contains points both in A and not in A. So, let's, um, let's see here. So A, I, B, I, no. Let A, B be an interval, some interval containing X. This does not need to be one of the UIs, it's just an arbitrary interval. Now what we need to do is we need to do, we need to let C, D be the intersection of A, B, and 0, 1. Um, now, a few things we need to note here. Um, first of all, this is going to contain x because x is in the interval from 0 to 1, um, but x is not in a. So x, well, let's see here. x could be 0 or 1, right? Um, if x is in the closed interval from 0 to 1, but it's not in A. So A is a union of open intervals. So X could be 0 or 1? Hmm. Is this bad? All right, so I need to fix this argument a little bit. So suppose there exists an interval CD such that X is in CD and CD is a subset of both of the intersection of AB with 0, 1. So this is always possible so yeah this will always be possible unless x is precisely 0 or 1 because if x is between 0 and 1 then the interval from a to b contains a neighborhood b because x if x is between 0 and 1 then you could take like the distance between you could take the open interval from the midpoint of 0 and x 
to the midpoint of x and 1, and take the intersection of that with a and b, and you can let that be your cd, and that will work. Okay, so then there exists a rational q such that q is in cd. And cd is contained in 0, 1, so there is some u in our collection of neighborhoods such that q is in u. And u is contained in a, because a is the union of the u's. Um, and this holds because every rational number in the open interval from 0 to 1 is contained in some a, i, b, i. All right. So Q is in both C, D, and A, which means that's also in A, B, and A. Also, X is in A, B, obviously, because it's a neighborhood, and it's not in A, because it was chosen to be not in A. Thus, x is in the boundary of A, because every neighborhood of x contains points both in A and not in A. So, now we have to go back and think about the cases where x could be 0, 1. Um, if x equals 0, um, then x is in half open interval from 0 to b, which is a subset of a, b. Right, because if x is 0, then you have a neighborhood a comma b of 0. a must be less than 0 and b must be greater than 0, so it must look like this. So what we do is we choose q to be a rational number in the interval from 0 to b. And so then you just do the same thing because um, if because obviously this open interval from 0 to b contains rational numbers and then you have a rational number between 0 and 1 and so it's contained in some uh, open interval in fancy u, and so it's contained in a. But q is also contained in the interval from a to b because it's contained in the interval from 0 to b. And thus, by the same argument, x is in the boundary of a. Similarly, if x equals 1, choose q to be a rational number between a and 1. So thus, this takes care of all possible values of x. So 0, 1 set minus a is contained in the boundary of a. I really don't like this. I really wanted to do an argument that would work for all numbers and not just like have a separate case for 0 and 1. Um, but I don't I don't see a, an easy way to do that. And so this is a little annoying. Um, but oh well, what can you do? It's a proof. It'll work. So now we want to prove the reverse inequality.
So, okay. So if x is in A, then x is in U is a subset of A for some U in fancy U, just by definition. Because, because U is just, or A is a union of open intervals, so x must be in one of those open intervals. And so, if x is in A, then x must be in the interior of A. But then x cannot be in the boundary of A, because interior, exterior, and boundary, these are all disjoint sets. They're all disjoint from each other. If x is greater than 1, then the open interval from 1 to x plus 1 is a neighborhood, an open neighborhood of x such that the intersection of 1 and x plus 1 with a is empty because a only contains numbers between 0 and 1. Um, it can't contain numbers greater than 1. So what this tells us is that x is in the exterior of A. Likewise, if x is less than 0, then x is contained in this interval, x minus 1 to 0. And this obviously does not intersect A, so X is in the exterior of A again. All right. So if X is in the boundary of A, we know that X cannot be in A because A because then it would be in the interior. X must be greater than or equal to 1 because if it weren't, then it would be in the exterior. And X must be... No, I have this backwards. X must be less than or equal to 1 because otherwise it would be in the exterior. And X must be greater than or equal to 0 because otherwise it would be the exterior. And thus, x must be in both the closed interval from 0 to 1, but also not in A. And thus, the boundary of A is contained in 0, 1, set minus A. And that's the other inclusion that we needed, so hence, the boundary of A is precisely this interval. All right, so it was, there were a few details that we had to be a little careful about at the beginning, um, but other than that, this was just standard arguments of what does it mean to work with the interior, exterior, and boundary, and we also had to um, use some facts about the real numbers, um, such as, let's see here, so I guess we used in this argument that there is a rational number between any two reals, and in exercise 116, I proved that, so I'm not going to prove it again here. It's sort of a standard thing. Um, I wish they would have gone over it in this textbook before introducing it, or using it in an exercise, because I don't remember seeing it in any of the proofs of the um, theorems, but in any case, this is a solution to the exercise, and so we are done.